I am the team lead at the Conservation Alliance of Kenya, which is an umbrella organization for registered organizations working in the environment and man natural resources management in this country, mm -hmm. Africa, and globally. That sounds like a very, very big job. Yes, it's a very, very huge assignment uh, because all these members are looking upon me to provide direction for them and to make sure that wildlife matters mm -hmm. are always at the, at, at the for forefront. Mm -hmm. And then also looking forward to engage with the target audience in terms of where your space is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, again, I'm, I'm very... I'm very, how to say, artistic. Everything about me is a bit, art, a lot, a bit artistic. So Poacher is a Kenyan-based movie, all Kenyan actors, for Kenyan production, and it's about um, poaching, as the name suggests. So it's um, set up in somewhere in, you know, wildlife type situation. And then we have three groups of people. So we have the authorities who are trying to protect the elephants and all these um, fantastic wildlife species. Then we have the poachers themselves who are harvesting the tusks of the elephant. And then we have a third group, those are the now normal village people who are actually being affected. Like the elephants pass by and destroy their crops and, and their food products and all these things. But they do not harvest, but they will if it means a coin or a penny in their pocket, you know, to feed their families. Mm -hmm. So. What part of, of that dynamic do you focus on? Excellent. That's a very good analogy when you say the poacher. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to joining conservation, mm -hmm. uh, I used to think that I've never destroyed natural resources. Mm -hmm. But only when I got in is when I realized, my goodness, I think my background, I've actually been a poacher. Why have I seen that I've been a poacher? Mm -hmm. We killed rats. We killed snakes. That's different. <laughs> that's, that's different. <laughs> At a mendo bro. At a at a mosquito, yeah. you're a poacher. It was a mosquito. Woo! Right? You're a poacher. So everyone is a poacher. Uh -huh. Now, using my background, I've killed both small and big mm -hmm. and big animals before. Even a dog, even you know a pig, the way you kill it, the way you slaughter it. Mm -hmm. You know, you can fall in the category of the poacher that you've described. So using your description. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, I feel in the category of where the normal Mwanainchi is, where the people are, mm -hmm. because that's where I come from. Mm -hmm. I don't work in the agency that actually protects natural resources, but I work with the people. Mm -hmm. And so my role is to work with the people uh, to see how culture fuses in with conservation. And having said initially from the start that I, we all come from communities that are poaching mm -hmm. and that are using wildlife resources as a way of sustaining their daily livelihood or as a way of entertainment or depending on whatever way you want to call it. Previously, uh, we, 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 are, we are rewriting the narrative from the Maasai culture mm -hmm. where you have to kill a lion in order for you to prove your manhood mm -hmm. and several cultures also we are rewriting it among the Samburu culture you have to present an ivory ring before you wed. And so many things are working at the moment. And that's why I fall in the category of the communities where the majority of the Kenyans are. Okay. But we also work very closely with the protectors, that's the Kenya Wildlife Service, mm -hmm. and all the agencies that are also responsible for that. And uh, one of the things that we work on a daily basis is to see how we reduce the impact caused by the poacher, the one now that kills. Mm -hmm. And they kill either for the the, for the products that the animals have, or they kill also just to sustain themselves. Mm -hmm. But this is a very destructive category of poachers mm -hmm. that we need to deal with in our country. Is it really poaching if you're getting rid of a, a nuisance? If the lion is coming and eating all my flock, or if the elephant is trampling all over my food source, is it really poaching if I, you know, tokapa? Yeah, I need to eat also. There are, um, there are two ways of looking at it. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you come into contact with a wild animal and the wild animal is causing destruction and disrupting your everyday issues, there are two things that we advise. is contact Kenya Wildlife Service mm -hmm. because they are the ones who can guide you in terms of helping you contain uh, the issue that is uh, happening at that particular place. Mm -hmm. Now, quite often, uh, Kenya Wildlife Service may not respond on time or may not respond at the point where you expect them to mm -hmm. and there could be some slight delay. So just ex you know, expect it because that's natural. But under normal circumstances, there are what we call early warning signs. And this is where we work with communities 
to be able to work with Kenya Wildlife Service so that you don't wait for the elephant to come and destroy, mm -hmm. but you alert Kenya Wildlife Service and tell them, we've seen lions hovering around, we've seen elephants around, and they could be kilometers away. Alert them kilometers away so that they can come camp with you and help you reduce the impact that they do. Now, I do understand also elephants do move at night and they will surprise you in the middle of the night and they come. And that's where we also sit down with you to train you also uh, to help you see how to mitigate. So, for example, an elephant will come and you've got your granary and they'll come and leave the granary and eat. The elephant is interested in eating and satisfying itself. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So it's sad that that's what it does. Uh, but then when you take the responsibility of uh, protecting your property or protecting yourself, there are two scenarios that may happen. Scenario number one is you may kill the animal. Mm -hmm. And according to the act, it becomes an offense and you can be charged. Wow. Scenario number two mm -hmm. is the animal can kill you. Mm -hmm. All right? And when it kills you, then again, uh, it, it, it brings in other issues. So it's a risk that um, we are taking if we don't engage the agencies that are responsible in taking care of the animal and at the same time also protecting lives. Mm. So it's a double-edged sword. One of uh, another, okay, rather, another phenomenon I've seen that is also Kenyan. Hey, I watched a TED talk of a young boy who was tired of his village being just harassed by lions and, and such things and wildlife. And my favorite thing about this story is he did not choose violence. What he did was he set up a lighting system so that if it's, it's, I don't, can't remember if it's motion censored, but as soon as a lion comes, so all the lights just go on and then the animal just moves away by itself. Like there's, there's no, but also <clears throat> clear his throat. I have seen a, a case where there was a lion. Nala was found somewhere at the bypass, just walking, walking around, just chilling. What is that? How can I just be, Steve, I'm a bit concerned. I cannot yeah, just yeah. be walking yeah, yeah. and just bump into a lion. No. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. <coughs> well, it depends where you are brought up. Mm -hmm. Where I was brought up, those are normal scenarios. <gasps> we would walk and see snakes passing by. That's how I grew up. Okay. So imagine, <laughs> let me give you a perspective, <laughs> different from where you grew up. Uh -huh. uh, let's use the communities that live with this resource. Uh -huh. You wake up in the morning, and I've actually witnessed that. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing a lion right in front of you, like about, you know, 20 meters. And it's on an anthill, and you've camped right on an anthill. And the lion is waking up, trying to look for the next prey. And you're coming out of your tent, and you're seeing the lion there. What's your first reaction? Wow, I only see this on TV. Flight! But I'm seeing it live. Ah. It's exciting. Ah. It's an exciting moment, yes. We have different. <laughs> <laughs> different definitions of exciting, but please continue. What happened? That's exciting. Mm -hmm. So you simply just sit back and watch. Okay. And then eventually you find the lion is not interested in you. So you just look at each other. You just watch and a snake is passing. You simply just stand still, mm -hmm. observe what it's going to do. It will look at you, say hi. And it will continue with its okay, activities. Okay, maybe it's because you're a guy. You know us and snakes, the, the woman and snakes. Yeah, Ever I since understand. the Garden of Eden, we've not been friends. I understand. Okay, mm. let's talk about a baboon. Mm -hmm. All right, a baboon will harass women more than men. Why now? Yeah, it's because women show some level of scaredness and a baboon gets excited and chases you. <laughs> All right, you're getting it. So women are more vulnerable to baboons <laughs> than men. And right now, baboons are not even staying in, their, in the area where they are supposed to. <laughs> People have even gone to the forest and interfered with the habitats of baboons and monkeys. Wow. And that's why now they're in our homes. Mm -hmm. So if you are to ask me what needs to happen is we need to adjust our attitudes mm -hmm. and begin to live with these animals. Yesterday, I was, um, I was somewhere near Galeria mm -hmm. and baboons were there and I saw this... Um, the security guard mm -hmm. eating a sweet and the baboon was just, you know, a few feet away. And I was like, wow, that's a here. lovely scene uh -huh. that baboons are getting closer to us. Monkeys are getting closer to us. Mm -hmm. And if we get closer to them also, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that we should actually get closer to them because there are challenges when you get closer mm -hmm. that we encourage what is called coexistence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there are certain animals you can get close. There are others you don't. I don't encourage you to get close to a lion. I don't encourage you to get close to an elephant. There are two scenarios. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example of a very, very nice story mm -hmm. for young people to know. Using my narrative, the one I've told you mm -hmm. of coexistence, 
if you have come from a place and you're drunk and you're staggering Oy. and you're walking home and you meet a lion, <laughs> my goodness, you're in trouble. <laughs> because as you stagger, the lion reads your actions and your emotions what? and it senses you want to attack. Oh, wow. The lion doesn't know you're drunk. Uh -uh. It reads your senses and emotions and quickly says, here, I'm in danger. Uh -huh. And you become a prey to that lion out of self-defense. This is information that has been researched and it's been proven over time that majority of the people who actually get killed by lions are those who've come from drinking places. That's a fact. Hey, oh, yeah. All right? Oh. So be very careful even as you, if, 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 even as you interact outside there, mm -hmm. that animals read our emotions and our actions and they interpret them differently. Mm -hmm. And quite often, just like human beings, they go onto self-defense mode. Same thing also with snakes. Mm -hmm. If they read an action, they go into defense and that's when they attack. Mm -hmm. But if you just stay calm, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. Once we were walking mm -hmm. and we were removing uh, snares that were set by poachers to trap animals, and right about 10 feet, there was a lion. Mm. And there were three of us. I mean, I was scared. Mm -hmm. I was scared. That was my first experience. I was scared. Wow, a lion. I'm looking for anywhere to hide and there is nothing and they're just short shrubs. What did we do? We just stayed calm. Mm -hmm. All right. He looked at us. We looked at it. And it continued moving. And we allowed it to continue moving and it went opposite direction and we continued with our activity. Same thing with, um, with buffaloes mm -hmm. and, um, <coughs> and rhinos. Mm -hmm. They sense through the wind, all right? Uh -huh. So if the wind blows their sense toward the animal, then they sense there's a human being nearby. Mm -hmm. So if you just want to walk and enjoy nature, it's just look at the direction of the wind. So how do you, uh, how do you tell the direction of the wind? I don't know, but I guess you know how to do it. If you don't, I'll teach you. Teach me, because me the one they taught me. Mm, the uh -huh. Yes, that one. Yes, then that you one. know where the wind uh -huh. is going. You know it's blowing that direction. Mm -hmm. So if you are seated in the direction where the rhino is or the buffalo is and I'm here and the wind is blowing that direction mm -hmm. and I don't want the buffalo to sense, I simply just ensure that the direction the wind is blowing doesn't blow my scent there. So I simply just move the opposite direction and I can enjoy observing the animal in its natural state without causing the animal to panic. So itakangi tu hasira. Itakangi hasira. Yeah, just be cool be calm mm -hmm. and we can enjoy the company of these wild animals. You don't have to put an animal in a zoo in order for you to go and feel it. Mm -hmm. In fact, tourists like coming to Kenya because our wildlife are in the natural habitats mm -hmm. and they enjoy seeing them in the natural. It's a different experience from being a zoo. Mm -hmm. Neither am I also promoting that you can actually have animals as pets, mm -hmm. you know, the same way we have dogs and cats in our homes. Mm -hmm. Let the ones that are in the natural world remain its natural habit you understand the dynamics they live in and just enjoy understanding them. They are very nice. They are beautiful lessons you can learn from animals. And that's another session that I can wow. take you right from the dick dick that are paired for life. A very good example of how to have a happy marriage. <laughs> 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 and pigeons and doves that have got very nice love stories for oh. life. Wow. It's for life. My thought was just penguins. No, just no, 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 no. It's for life. Yeah. They are very interesting, interesting stories for elephants. Mm -hmm. I mean, the matriarch, mm -hmm. which is the female. It's the one that leads the herd, mm -hmm. not the male, not, not wow. the bull. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there are different stories you can learn from each other and apply them in life. Hmm. Okay, guys, just in case you've missed this part, please don't just go drinking and then say hi to a lion. Don't do it. Don't do it. There's a <laughs> meme. <laughs> <laughs> Someone painted a dog the color of a cheetah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then released it in the night time when the people were coming home. Oh my gosh, it did not work out very well for our people under the influence. <laughs> but in case you actually do meet a lion, please don't freak out. Just be cool, be calm. And it's not just lions, just animals in general. Mm. Mm -hmm. If my ancestor, we need to talk, but aside from that, just be cool and calm. So what does a normal day for Steve look like in terms of wildlife preservation? A normal day for me, uh, <clears throat> I'll talk about before COVID, 
was being out there in the world. Mm. All the things that I'm describing to you are experiences that I enjoyed by just being out there, watching, engaging, talking with people, trying to look for sustainable solutions to address the growing wildlife conflict, and always engaging with government to look for sustainable solutions. You know, we are right now at crossroads, mm -hmm. where infrastructure developments and the needs of human beings are now stretching and beginning to interfere with the habitat for wildlife and we always find ourselves on a collision path. Whether we want to build a road, whether we want to build a standard gauge railway, whether we want to build a pipeline, which is good for human development and also for the economy, mm -hmm. but we find ourselves in conflicts on an everyday basis. I'm always thinking about government and trying to see how do we get government decisions being compatible also with wildlife and how do we engage without speaking at each other and where we find that, um, <clears throat> that uh, you know, uh, things have gone beyond the levels that we anticipated, then we have to look for solutions. And that means that we've got to look for opportunities, always sit down and discuss. So right now, there is a matter we are discussing, which is in court, I cannot talk about it, uh, of a developer who wants to grow avocado and vegetables on an elephant migratory corridor from where we stand from. That's, it's gonna increase conflict. That's a very interesting But thing I can't talk about that matter because it's in court and we are so also part okay. and parcel. I understand. But those are the, 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 the kind of issues that I deal on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. uh, final one is just enlightening Kenyans. I love talking to Kenyans, mm -hmm. particularly the young people. This is your only opportunity to visit the Masai Mara right now, mm -hmm. uh, particularly when there are no tourists coming. Mm -hmm. uh, the costs have reduced drastically, mm -hmm. all right? take advantage of this particular time to visit, this visit these places, mm -hmm. try and understand what is it that people spend lots of money to come to Kenya every now and then to mm -hmm. see. Visit the parks when you've got time. Visit and really, really have, have, have an interaction with nature mm -hmm. and wildlife. And by the time you come, it clears your mind and it relaxes, it suits you. Mm -hmm. And then after that, when you go and have your beer, if you drink beer, that's okay. If you have tea, you are a tea toddler like me, or coffee and you have your coffee, mm -hmm. you are still fine. But don't stress yourself in the hassles of every day trying to fetch a living. Get out there in the world and relax your mind. It's therapeutic. I believe it's you. It's a joy. I really like. Yeah. In fact, even the places I have lived, I like living around many trees. Like it's just Good. in a katusha go, but I kind of really like that vibe. Okay, I want to work backwards. So you've talked about tourism, and I really want to applaud that you that you are trying to engage us, trying to ask us to you know go see Tembea Kenya hashtag Tembea Kenya because according to social media, the places to be in Dubai, mm -hmm. desert, Wapi eh, Wine Zanzibar, where else? Just places that are not Kenya, and you'd be very, very surprised that your home is even more beautiful than the countries that you are struggling to, or you want to go see or you've already gone to see. Mm -hmm. So pitch one more time, one more time for, for just how beautiful the country is, because it really is. Kenya is beautiful. <clears throat> From the mountains to the valleys, that's the Rift Valley, mm -hmm. all right, to the Indian Ocean, all right, and then we talk about deserts. We also have a desert in Kenya, Chalbi Desert. Mm -hmm. You know, Google, use Google Map. Yeah. It will guide you to know where Chalbi the Desert is. The last time I used that word. It's a tarmac road. <laughs> it's a tarmac road from Nairobi all the way to Marsabit. Get to Marsabit <laughs> and begin to look for Chalbi Desert. Mm -hmm. If you want a desert experience, you don't have to go all the way to Dubai. Mm -hmm. You are safe and there's no corona <laughs> in Chalbi. <laughs> Woo! Uh -huh. All right? Or, or you don't have to go all the way to Namibia to experience what the... Bushmen go through, just go there mm -hmm. to Chalbi Desert. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a nice experience for some of us who've been there. Who've been there. Go to Lake Turkana, mm -hmm. one of those neglected areas. Beautiful sceneries, mm -hmm. you know, right from the valleys and everything. In fact, when Safaricom did its first, ma its, its first uh, calendar mm -hmm. and they took pictures of Turkana, people were thinking, this can't be Kenya. Certainly not Kenya. It is Kenya. Kenya is beautiful is endowed with a lot of interesting places you can visit. It's endowed with a lot of culture where you can learn mm -hmm. uh, as part of history. Go and learn your history. Kenya is losing its history much more faster mm -hmm. uh, than we were. All right, go and learn your history. In fact, the other day when, uh, when we were in a function with the cabinet secretary, 
many, there's a generation in Kenya that doesn't know that actually the first capital city of Kenya was actually Machakos. Mm. Hey, Machakos, Kwanza ni desert, say, oh, no, I'm sorry. All right, I the first capital that. city was actually Machakos. <laughs> it's only when the standard gauge railway reached Nairobi, mm -hmm. that's when the capital city was shifted from Machakos to, to Nairobi. Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And now you can understand why there's a connection always between Machakos and Nairobi that you can't tell the difference. Mm -hmm. Growing population is living in that area. So get to know your history, mm -hmm. because as you visit other places, and you say you are a Kenyan, mm -hmm. the first thing they will ask you, ah, unakimbia. <laughs> and then the next thing they ask you, wildlife. Hey, are you getting it? That's what Kenyan is known for. Backyard. <laughs> now don't embarrass us. Don't embarrass us. What so get to say? know your country. <laughs> And as you visit the Dubais, as you visit South Africa, you go to Ooh. market also Kenya. <laughs> you are an ambassador of Kenya. So create a brand for Kenya uh -huh. and speak about it. You can only speak about it mm -hmm. if you visit these places, mm -hmm. if you know the places that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. All right, so that when people come, they're not just coming for wildlife tourism, mm -hmm. but they're also coming for cultural tourism, and they're also coming just to enjoy the welcoming free spirit of Kenyans. I like the places that you've mentioned, but at, at first glance, it doesn't sound like somewhere I want to go. Turkana, Pazma, Skia, Joto, Aguna Maji, Aguna Tabula. The only thing I see is this. Try at a Netflix, at a Netflix with Aona Pale, the internet window, Naitaji, Iko. At a Netflix with Aona Pale, your pocha, you can still continue watching it there. You're smart. I yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> It's on the internet that you need. Go to these places. There's nothing you miss from Nairobi when you go out. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yes. And I like the aspect of traveling. It kind of makes you feel that all your problems, when you're by yourself and, and all your problems in your head and you think the world is ending, but you travel and you see things, you meet people, and they become this big, your problems. Yep. This big, guys, this big. So, Tembea Kenya, Takani kwa ploti, let's start from mm -hmm. <laughs> local. Tembea tu kwa ploti, ukiedaga, sawa. Yep. <laughs> Hashtag is why in the morning. In conclusion, what would you like us to remember from this conversation? Like I said, <clears throat> the only way you can tell the Kenyan story mm -hmm. from a cultural practice, from what we believe in as Kenyans and what we do as Kenyans, is for you to dig and know more. You want to know why why Samburus must give an ivory ring before they say, I do? Mm -hmm. Go to the Samburus and ask them. You want to find out why the Maasai is now are running away from killing lions to prove manhood? Go find it. They're now having what you call the Maasai Marathon. Mm -hmm. Join them in the Maasai Marathon and appreciate. Mm -hmm. So uh, don't just stick onto your comfort zone. Get out of your comfort zone and begin to understand other people. Mm -hmm. That's my rally call. And also, you know, uh, don't just, uh, don't just uh, look at conservation organizations like myself as people who are there to serve the Mzungu community. The wildlife resource belongs to the people of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Kenya Wildlife Service are just custodians. They are managing it on behalf of Kenyans. So Kenyans have a voice mm -hmm. on how the government and how the agencies manage the natural resources because the benefits accruing from these natural resources support all of us. So this is your resource that I'm speaking to you about, mm -hmm. and you need to take responsibility in terms of how the government is handling it. Hmm. Finally, mm -hmm. ensure that you don't destroy it. Wildlife is God-given. Can I have a comment? Uh, the moment you destroy, it's gone and it's gone. Mm -hmm. Right now, Kenya is struggling so hard to rebuild the population of the northern white rhino <coughs> because there are only two left and they're in all Pajeta but in the entire mated. world. They mated, they mated, I watched the news, they mated. Yes, they mated, we're still waiting. But it won't be the same as the original northern white rhino, mm -hmm. all right? It will be different because science has come in mm -hmm. and appreciates the role of science, but it won't be the same. Mm -hmm. So once you destroy it, it's gone. Today we are talking, yesterday I was seeing a picture on the fig tree in Westlands that is going to be cut because of the Nairobi Expressway that is going to cut. Oh, you never have a doing. fig tree like that again. Once you cut it, that's it. It's gone. That's how natural resources are. Some are renewable, some are not renewable. Mm -hmm. So watch out. It's, it's unfair that we have to choose between making our lives easier with resources and, yeah. and nature. It's it's unfair, but it is what it is. Uh -huh. All right. Lastly, please do give us your social media handle so we can get into contact with you, follow up what you're doing, maybe even offer support where we can. Excellent. 
you can follow me on Facebook and on Twitter, uh, Steve Dotitala, uh, my, 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 <coughs> my login details. Uh, please do follow me and let's interact uh, from that level. If you need to be exposed onto what conservation organizations are doing, please let me know. We will involve you. If you are looking for opportunities to volunteer and learn more, you want to get interested in conservation issues, please tag in with us. I'll connect you with the membership. And uh, depending on when the opportunities are available, you'll be able to do that. But please, make a date if you're in Nairobi, go to Nairobi National Park. If you're in Nakuru, go to Lake Nakuru National Park and understand why the water levels are rising mm -hmm. and why the headquarters is submerged in water. If you're in Savo, enjoy the Savo. If you're in Amboseli, enjoy the Amboseli. If you're in Laikipia, enjoy the Laikipia. Beautiful sceneries. If you're in Western Kenya, where I come from, enjoy Western Kenya and the culture. Mm -hmm. And visit Kisumu also. Kisumu is going to become the hub of tourism very soon. Mm -hmm. And they are going to introduce what we call boats for you to move around the East African region. Wow. Interesting things are coming. Mm -hmm. If you are in Ruma, enjoy the Ron Antelope, which is unique only in the Ruma and part of the Shimba Hills. If mm -hmm. you are in Kwale, enjoy the coast and the marine life. Unique species. Now we, now we can actually spot dolphins mm -hmm. in our what? Indian Ocean. Yes. But you're like a Interesting water stuff. You have a lot of information there in your head. Eh? This is what I want to pour out. I like that. So what yeah. you put in is what comes out. Remember that always, guys. Yeah. So we gotta leave. We gotta go. We've had too much fun. Told him 20 minutes, but it's been well over 20 minutes. <laughs> I didn't know he was this funny. <laughs> I could find us at Y54 on Facebook, Y54 channel on Twitter. Hashtag is Y in the morning. See at you end it, please. We are still not done entertaining you till 10 a.m. And even then, you must stay why because we have a lot, a lot, a lot prepared just for you.